I'm doing a video out here in this harsh, harsh light so that I can um, see what I look like in bad lighting. Hmm. How is everybody out there? I have not done very many videos at all. Hello to all my new subscribers. Uh, this is uh, my blog in which I just talk about stuff. So it came to pass, um, historically the Spanish flu was a two year span, almost to the day, but not quite. Um, March, 2022, it's over, so two years. It started in March in parts of the United States. It started in February in Brooklyn, New York. So, done, boof. And uh, now everybody's thinking about a country that's got a flag that's blue and yellow. And uh, all I know is that my, um, my second husband, uh, his family, uh, came through Ellis Island and they were Ukraine and they were very angry awful people and they were cheaters um, tax evaders and alcoholics mm -hmm. so I can't say anything nice about the people because I don't know any of them except for the ones that came here so I guess we got the bad ones and the good ones stayed in the country with the uh, blue and the uh, blonde flag. Yeah, why did I marry him? I was so in love. Oh gosh, he smelled like cinnamon toast. Yeah, I felt so comfortable in his arms. And he was really, really good to me. But he had some issues. One of them was control issue. You know, he was a real controller. Surprise, surprise. And uh, I um, was essentially mirroring uh, the love that I knew from my childhood, which is conditional love and reward punishment sort of love. So, and an emotional, uh, emotionally not available love. And uh, yeah, we'll do it together my way sort of thing, not me, but um, oh yeah, Kathleen, your input is important, but we're gonna do it my way anyway, that sort of thing. And I really got tired of the condescension um, He told me that I, it's kind of funny actually, had nothing new to say. And don't interrupt his reading of the New Yorker to just yammer. And um, we didn't spend that much time together because we both worked. So this would be like on a Saturday morning, I suppose. And, uh, Oftentimes, I was going to go to work because I work on Saturdays. Not always, but I do. Yeah, getting to do something together, that was an impossible feat, too. Except on vacation, and even then. Initially, we had a really good time. It was so romantic. You know, riding bikes in the summer sun on Bald Head Island, um, eating at beautiful establishments, being young and in love. I mean, I was in my late 30s and he was in his mid 40s. Um, it must have been my mid to late 30s. I could still have babies. Um, and just slowly over time, he, it just changed. And I'm not sure if it was my inability to negotiate, like I lack negotiation skills or something, you know? I don't know. So, you know, I'm taking a good look at myself, um, <clears throat> wondering, um, you know, whether or not I have um, the ability to be in a relationship without losing myself. <laughs> you know? 
And so I am on a dating app. I am. And there's this guy on there that actually makes my heart beat faster. <laughs> Freak me out, no lie. I even got like interested sens for sensuality. And I've never had that happen. So I know I'm in trouble if I meet him. And of course he writes me back. And he wants to know <clears throat> what my passions are. And that question, I mean, my heart started beating faster and I blushed <laughs> and I had to step away from the question. <laughs> I had to step away from the question because I was like, oh my gosh, just the question's making me hot. Nobody ever asked me what my passions were before. And that was the biggie. I learned that in my life. I, I did not grow up with um, being able to have my heart's desire. I didn't have my heart's desire. It was like, you get what you get. Beggars can't be choosers, that sort of thing. That's what my mother said. That beggars can't be choosers. You get what you get. <laughs> she was calling me a beggar. <laughs> she was also calling me ungrateful. It's like, oh my goodness. I, that, that took a lifetime to get over. And that's what I'm like, wow. I can now have a love relationship that doesn't mirror my mother. Now that I've healed myself and I recognize just how amazing I actually am. <laughs> Very unique. All right. Okay. Nobody I know is like me. People either wore this or got this. And I'm like, why? God, go through the sun, go through the love of God and life and accept the inoculations and the boost from the earth. <laughs> it's the earth that gives you the boosts and it's the uh, ionic transference of the sun or the plasma or the rays or whatever it is that's happening here from this relationship we have because our physical bodies are what we see but we're quarks <laughs> we're like these sparky light beings actually um, and so people are going about it all wrong like they're just going about the world like this physical body is what matters but it in their, their physical whatever and it's not exclusive yeah it matters but it's not exclusive you need to get the prana and the chi from the world from the environment that's why the people were forced indoors because if you want to break a human you keep them out of the outside Put them, take, take them further and further outside of nature. I mean, I was like, can't you guys see what these evil fucks are doing? <laughs> They're trying to break human spirit. It's just like the narcissistic relationships I was in. That's why I can see it so easily. That's why. And none of it fell, none of this gaslighting and moving the goalposts worked on me because I'd been through this many two husbands and then that last narcissist relationship before i finally boom got it three is the charm all right i know what a narcissist is now so when this whole thing went down i was like wow um the people in leadership positions are narcissists and then you could see the whole thing I'm, like, I'm not gonna fall for any of it <laughs> I, I was scared at my look at my channel click on my name here and they go to my videos and go to the ones date stamped. I think I date stamped them, um, March, 2020 and April, 2020. Uh, I did do masks are dumb video and that was, uh, flagged by YouTube and taken down, but my channel was still allowed because it was just the only, it was the only one that said masks are dumb. People should take them off. They breed bacteria doctors and nurses change them regularly and they're operating on open bodies it protects them too i mean what happens if some blood goes Gee. they get hit they, they get hit with blood yeah mm. 
But anyway, that's what people would say to me. They would like, well, doctors and, and, and uh, physicians assistants and, and surgeons and stuff use them. And I was like, yeah. And they change them out and they're always new. They're not dirty. You don't, you don't get ring around the muzzle. Like you'll see on people. If you get up close, you'll see they have dirt all around their muzzle. And you're like, yeah, you're breathing that in. I guess you didn't have a tough enough marriage, you know? I'm thinking that. I'm thinking, do easy marriages make for people who just aren't with it upstairs? They're just really easy to manipulate? I'm thinking that must be what it is. Because I've had a very challenging life, and I'm thinking that's what made me equipped. So now I'm saying, thank you, universe. <laughs> I now look at this guy and I'm going, wow. I hope he doesn't have something majorly wrong with him. Um, but uh, at least I have these feelings, you know? So that's the cool thing. I actually was like, he asked me about my passion. Mm. Passion or passions. And I got a heart palpitation. <laughs> I had to, I had to like, I told you, disengage from the internet for 12 hours. <sighs> I am so grateful. I am me. And I now realize that I'm the one in all my relationships that brought all this love and joy and zest for life. It's, it was me. I'm the one. And I, I'm the one that's this loving buttercup of uh, effervescence and thrills and joy. And the one that really has a good time sexually, it's me. <laughs> wow. It's me. So now I get to choose from the men who choose me. And I get to discern and I get to play it my way, which is a really long courtship. And then somebody who knows the Kama Sutra, a tantric lover, because nothing else will do. You know, there are really, really lousy lovers out there. It doesn't matter what size you are. Now, I have a penis size and myths and modern art and all of that. I've got a couple of videos on that. Just Go to my video. You can't even do a word search anymore because the bastards that run YouTube uh, made it so you can't do a word search. But if you then go onto my, cha my, my, my station, my channel, right? Click on me. Go to videos. And then use a filter that allows you to search for most popular views. There's oldest, newest, and most popular views. Go to the most popular. Penis size discussions are one of the most popular topics there is out there on the internet. Besides what I discovered is the INFJ, which is what I am. <laughs> and you know, I discovered that in 2018. And before that, I used to think something was wrong with me because I would let people make me feel like something was wrong with me because I would criticize the way I did things. and because of my nature, I'd be open to the idea of improving myself. So I don't immediately resist such um, projection of another person's methodology or whatever, or their opinion, right? So now I listen, but I don't do it. And that's another reason why. It's like when your body knows when you, when I went through the front battle with a personality type that was constantly, couldn't stand peace and quiet, okay? If too much, if, if, if things were peaceful, something just had to happen dramatically because they were addicted to it. Because I like peace and quiet. And beautiful sleeping dogs. That dog is just chilling behind me. Yeah, this is the philosophy of a pet sitter. So I'm done talking. 
wanted to show you the dog. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the harsh lighting on me. And um, yeah, I have feelings again. Feelings for the opposite sex and one particular man in particular that asked me a question and it was, what are my passions? more about that later. In the meantime, you could ask yourself that. Because, you know, um, I mentioned this earlier, and I talked about, you know, the heart's desire. Because I had been in relationships in which um, I was constantly having to default to their desires. It was like no compromising on their part. So that was the other thing. I was um, bred to always acquiesce to the one who had the strongest desire because their needs matter. So I always acquiesced. And now that I'm not doing it anymore, I'm so much happier. And just like, wow, I am so much happier without a man that bosses me around. That I'm not in any hurry to get in a relationship with one and I'm certainly not going to get into one that, that thwarts me. So I've got all this fun stuff planned. And you, I'm going to take you on my journey. So the fun stuff I have planned, I'm going to be going to um, Southport, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go there and adventure. And I'm going to check out his history and its community and do good stuff like that. See if they have a farmer's market, you know. Eat at a nice restaurant. Drink with the locals at the local uh, water spot by the river. Yeah, I think it's the Cape Fear River. It's awesome. Okay, so yeah, the heart desire. I When I left husband number two, I remember asking myself that question. What do I want? What do I want? And I had a really hard time answering that question. So now I'm like, yeah, what I want is I want to go to Southport and pick where I'm going to sleep. And in the meantime, I've gotten beach equipment so I can go to Oak Island. So I have purchased a fold up beach wagon, a beach umbrella with a beach anchor, a, um, I already have a little igloo that will fit in there so I can carry my drinks. And I have a table that fits on the umbrella. Yeah, and I'm gonna take you on my adventure. And I'm getting a beach hat that I can also wear in a convertible and on a boat, <laughs> in case I get invited. All right, ciao and uh, lots of love. Uh, what is your passion? I'll tell you about mine later. I'm a, I asked him the question back. I answered it and I asked him the question back. Because that's the other thing. Narcissists don't answer questions. They always want to be on the receiving end of get information gathering. And that's how you can tell one. So you can tell one even before you meet one. Let's find out. But in the meantime, isn't it great? I feel stirrings. <laughs>